we want to win now. That was the message from general manager George Payton as the Broncos' initial 53 is set. Hello, I'm Phil Milani alongside Eric Dalala. Eric, a, a tough day around the NFL. Every club has to get down to a 53-man roster. We have a lot to get to here for the Broncos' moves. Let's start out with the backup quarterback position. Yeah, absolutely, Phil. I mean, this was a, a battle that I thought was close for all of preseason. Obviously, it really tightened up there at the end as Brett Rippon got the final start against the Minnesota Vikings and did enough to earn that backup quarterback position. Uh, he was the consistent guy. That's what head coach Nathaniel Hackett said he wanted to see. You saw Brett take strides in that direction. He said he's very prepared to be the backup quarterback, even though he has just four NFL games under his belt in his career. Um, but that doesn't mean the end of Josh Johnson, Phil. We heard George Payton say at his media availability they want Josh Johnson back on the practice squad. Um, obviously, as a veteran guy, he doesn't go through waivers, so that's a very real possibility. Um, but I think you know, it's just a sign that they're comfortable with Brett Rippon and, and trust him to back up Russell Wilson. A, a surprising move maybe to some, but uh, I think uh, regardless of who it is, Broncos fans don't want to see that guy ever play. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you keep <laughs> so that guy off the field. Congrats, uh, Rip, but we don't want to see you. I think that's the message there. Uh, on the other side of the ball, the Broncos made a trade today, moved Malik Reed to the Pittsburgh Steelers. George Payton uh, had a lot of nice things, though, to say about Malik. Yeah, he said everybody loves Malik Reed, and there's good reason for that, Phil. He's been a productive player here, former undrafted guy that has really stepped into a role as a starter the last few years, has the most sacks over the last two seasons by any outside linebacker, but as George Payton put it, just a log jam at that position. Obviously, in addition to your starters, you have Baron Browning, you have Nick Benito, Jonathan Cooper made this roster, Aaron Patrick, and so it just was at a place where there was so much depth they decided to find a draft pick. And listen, George Payton said, we weren't just going to send Malik anywhere. This was a situation where he wanted to go to Pittsburgh. It's a great organization where he's going to have a chance to contribute. Uh, but yeah, tough to part ways with a guy like Malik Reed. Yeah, Malik Reed, uh, 15 career sacks for the Broncos over the last couple of years and a really nice guy. So uh, the Steelers are getting a good one there. Let's talk about wide receiver a little bit, uh, Eric. That, there's a, a log jam there for sure. Brandon Johnson looked like he was heading to the initial 53, hurt his ankle, heard maybe that was a, a high ankle sprain, and uh, now he's heading to IR. Yeah, he's heading to IR, uh, so the Broncos, for him to go to play this year, would have to kind of do some roster maneuvers. Um, but in his place, Phil, you know, you've got a guy in Jalen Virgil that makes this team as an undrafted free agent. Obviously, the Broncos have a long tradition there. Um, but it was just interesting to see the way that the wide receiver battle played out because Seth Williams was a guy who had a couple of good games. Kendall Hinton, obviously, has contributed a lot. That was a surprise, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. You know, he was not only was he good in the preseason, but you know he can do it in the regular season. He had a touchdown against Pittsburgh a year ago. Obviously, good backup quarterback if you need one there. <laughs> the Hall of Famer. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of a surprise. Wonder if we'll maybe see him back here on the practice squad if he gets through waivers. Um, but, yeah, a tough deal in particular, I thought, for Brandon Johnson, who was poised to make this team and then just not going to quite be ready when they need him, had to go to IR. Tyree Cleveland earned a spot at wide receiver, but he'll be playing special teams, and it sounds like uh, special teams coordinator Dwayne Stukes really went to bat for him. Yeah, and he's a guy that didn't play at all during the preseason, as you mentioned, and I uh, he could be back, though, for week one. So that's important. Um, he's a guy that, whether it's as a gunner or somewhere else on special teams, he's that guy you can count on. Dwayne Stooks calls him a core special teamer. And we talk about, hey, the Broncos need to be better on offense. They've got to keep their defense to the standard it was at a year ago. Well, they've also got to be a lot better on special teams. And George Payton said some of these cuts were more difficult because of the depth. Well, that should help you on special teams if your depth is better. Tyree Cleveland, one of those guys that's going to try to help with that. And there's a couple of guys who are – the Broncos are not done making moves here. Uh, tomorrow, they will have to move a couple of guys uh, to IR. That's what George Payton said, right? Yeah, Michael Ojemudia, who suffered a dislocated elbow against Buffalo, uh, he's going to go to IR. And then Greg Dulcich, who, of course, has been battling a hamstring here really since the offseason program. George Payton said he was almost back, and then he tweaked his hamstring, I think is how he described it. Didn't call it a setback, but he just hasn't been able to get over that hump. And so 
he's not quite ready to go. They want to protect him from himself, get him some good rest, allow him to come back and be fully healthy because they still expect him to contribute this year. Both those guys feel they should be – George Payton says 100% chance they'll be ready week five, which is the earliest they can return. And then maybe some people are surprised that an Eric Tomlinson and a Mike Purcell were released from this roster. Well, because they're veterans, they don't have to go through waivers. They'll be back tomorrow after those IR moves are made. Yeah, so a lot of technicalities here. You know, if you're on the initial 53-man roster and then you go to IR, you can return week five. Yes. So that's why you make the move there. Brandon Johnson already going to IR. A little bit complicated there. A little bit tricky. There's still a way he could be back, but it's it's trickier. A much different move going to IR today versus tomorrow. And then for guys like Eric Tomlinson, Mike Purcell, they're veterans. They don't have to go through waivers, so they can just take one for the team, as George Payne said there. So. That's right. And th- those guys, he called them core pieces of what we're doing here. And so it's not just a, oh, uh, it doesn't mean that Mike and Eric Tomlinson are the you know, 54th and 55th no. best players. It's just because they don't have to go to waivers, you can just say, hey, guys, take the, take the afternoon off. We'll yep. see you tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, one other, a couple other things I wanted to get to here, Eric. Eight of the nine draft picks from the Broncos 2022 class made this roster. Fayon Hicks, uh, the lone draft pick who did not make the initial 53 here. That, that's a pretty good batting average. Yeah, well, they get to pick it, right? Yeah, I guess that's <laughs> No, true. but it's, uh, <laughs> it's a sign that this was a good class. And George Payton said, this is a nuts and bolts class. This is a class that's going to really improve our depth, improve the middle of our roster. You know, there might not be a Pat Sertan in this class right away, and it makes sense because the Broncos didn't pick until 64th overall. But what you have to do is you still have to hit on those guys and have them be either quality role players or develop into eventual starters. Sounds like George Payton thinks that those guys can do that. Again, he did mention uh, Greg Dulcich is a guy that can come back and be a flashy player, but it's kind of a meat and potatoes draft class rather than the uh, the caviar. Oh, Pat Sertan is some nice caviar. Yes. Huh? A little beluga. Yeah, you just, uh, yeah, okay. I like that. <laughs> I like that, Eric. Kind of threw me off my game there. I. Uh, And then uh, the last thing I wanted to ask you about was George Payton said that they received some calls about maybe some other trades, but said that they want to keep their best players right now. Feels like they want to win right now, Eric. Where do you think this initial 53 stacks up against some uh, from in the past? Yeah, I mean, they're just deeper from top to bottom. Obviously, you've got elite, elite talent now. Russell Wilson, for one, that changes things a little bit. And you've got guys like Pat Sertan and Justin Simmons and Bradley Chubb and Javante Williams and Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy and all these guys that are kind of these top-tier players. But I also think, you know, from 30 to 53, this is a stronger roster. As I said, I think that'll show up on special teams. I think it'll show up when, you know, inevitably you suffer some injuries for a couple of games and have to go through those. Uh, So I I think this roster is poised uh, just to be more complete. And, you know, George Payton said this is going to be a long night. We're not done yet. We're still going to scan the waiver wire and see what else we can find. And so maybe there's a position group like a cornerback or somewhere there that you can add a little bit. But from where it stands right now, a really good starting place. Yeah, there's a reason why we say initial 53. This is a moving line. And so uh, some guys may be happy today, but uh, tomorrow you never know. Man, you have to turn that's in that bleak, play, huh? I know, that is bleak, yeah. But that's reality in the NFL. It stands for not for long. That's true. So the Broncos are not done making moves here as they uh, check out what else happened around the NFL. That's going to do it for us. For Eric Delali, I am Phil Milani. The Broncos' initial 53 is set.